Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching slash Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channels and we are moving through our World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series this time for September 4th, 1982, my second birthday. So interesting just to look at, at what happens, you know, around your birthday every year in classic wrestling. But anyway, uh, we move into a show that's going to fall short of expectations, I think. Looking at September, it was a, I don't want to say uneventful month, but certainly um, the Michael Hayes shows up in, I believe, October. and But September felt kind of lame after the last two weeks of programs, which are available in the archive, the audio archive here on YouTube. Um, we move into David Von Erich versus Roberto Renesto. This is Von Erich's first uh, singles match in a while. He'd been in Florida for several months. Uh, he comes back at the at the stadium show and wins the All Asian Tag Belts with his brother uh, Kevin. Um, you know, basic, um, really basic match here, just to get Ke just to get David back in front of the fans. Uh, he does hit a high monkey flip, which was kind of fun to watch. Uh, Ernesto, not really a huge, uh, big deal here. Kind of more a guy to watch for the sake of, well, a uh, bigger guy who bumps around for the Von Erichs pretty much. I mean, that's what it amounts to. Uh, David, many people say, was the best of the Von Erich boys. Um, I'm beginning to see why, as I didn't come up with David, of course, uh, I'm going through this for the first time, and um, obviously, you know, that's that's kind of a big deal. But uh, David does a post-match promo after winning the contest um, and really spends a lot of time, well, not a lot of time, but he spends his time talking about being, being happy to be back home. Oddly enough, winning the match with a sleeper hold, which... I don't know, it doesn't seem very Von Erich-esque. You'd think he'd use the claw or something a little flashier, but he doesn't here. Uh, he legitimately, genuinely seems happy to be home. Uh, Pete Monte, Monte, uh, Monterose versus Bugsy McGraw up next. Uh, Monterose, another of the newer enhancement talents. Bugsy brings an umbrella around with him this time. Uh, never quite know what Bugsy's going to do. Bugsy, of course... Kind of that uh, Freddy Fargo, Eugene type character. Um, and has a lot of fun with being there. Has a lot of fun with just, you know, enjoying, I guess, being one of the guys. And, and you can really see that even at an at a advanced age, Bugsy McGraw does not uh, uh, mince on things. Uh, hits a series of just really fun jabs, really exaggerated punches in the in the early stages Bugsy of course wins the match and encourages all the fans to be as involved as they want to be um, fans bringing homemade signs to support Bugsy which I didn't realize people made signs in 1982 uh, I guess I should have known but at the same time I didn't realize fans were already that involved I thought the sign thing came more in the late 80s early 90s, but uh, here in 1982, there were a few kids, maybe they were playing kids with signs, I don't know, but they were there, and uh, Bugsy inspired some of them, at the very least, at least in world-class territory, and uh, just a sign of, of things that he can do. Bugsy, of course, not your most athletic fellow, but actually uh, does a delayed sell on a clothesline in the latter part of the match, that's kind of funny. He gets clotheslined, stays up for about five seconds, then falls down, then gets back up and hits the series of jabs again in the match. Uh, Bugsy not really connecting with a lot of those jabs, but he doesn't seem to care. The fans don't either. Uh, and then does the wind-up punch that just would uh, scare anybody away and gets the victory. Ronko Luvich just takes a knee, does not go all the way down for the cover because, well, he's too dang old. And uh, Bugsy basically thanking the fans and cuts a promo about various insanities, but he uh, seems very happy here as well. 
Uh, we move into Great Kabuki versus Al Madrill, a match we've seen many a time. And Madrill out there, and Bugsy pledges his support. So uh, that, you know, eventually will lead to a, a, tag ma a tag match down the road because that's how world class seems to work. Support from one guy one week, two or three weeks later, there's a tag match involving usually one of Gary Hart's uh, teams and uh, stable members, or two of them, and then things go all haywire. Uh, Madrill, again, I, I, I say, certainly on the heels of the Elvis interview from a couple episodes ago and the Ric Flair uh, non-title match where Madrill looked really good, uh, you can say what you want to about the guy being rather uninspired from time to time, but he can wrestle, and uh, he owns the first couple minutes of the match with basic offense. Um, Kabuki goes several minutes with a nerve hold, and the crowd is completely engrossed, even though it's just the most basic of holds. I think there'd, there'd be a lot if... Wrestling chose to go back to getting holds over that would work in MMA, even if it's the attempt to wrestle for a choke or wrestle for a knee bar or an arm bar or a triangle choke or something. I, I think you can update the use of holds away from the holds that wouldn't work anymore. I mean, really, a sleeper, all a sleeper is is a rear naked choke if it's applied the right way. You just change how you apply it and ta-da, you've, you've got a submission story all over again. I think... Submissions are underutilized, especially in your major companies, but also uh, underutilized in the independents as well because guys don't want to work holds. They want to go and do crazy stuff. Um, you know, a comeback for, um, for Madrill here is a, is a punch and then a, a flying shoulder tackle. I mean, it doesn't have to be major, and I think if you... Even if you did want to do the crazy spots, you could cut down to doing two or three of them per match, spaced out every but in a 10-minute match every three minutes, and you could still get so much more out of it and not waste your body. But uh, uh, near fall off a cradle, a uh, new referee who's willing to hit the mat, which is a good sign here. Uh, Kabuki does manage to... Uh, get things going back his way for a bit, but uh, again we go to the jabs of Madrill. Uh, Kabuki is back up and uses the mist, which ultimately I believe leads to his uh, disqualification here. Um, but Kabuki always with the face paint, so it's hard to see when he does something dastardly, but the referee does call for the bell. Uh, then we move on to the a, a feature piece here um, as we go into the many faces of Kabuki feature piece, kind of a video package talking about and showing the evolution of the Kabuki character, uh, focusing on the martial arts, the mist, and the whole ambiance of the character. I think these personality profile pieces which were done in the older days, uh, speak a lot to making uh, talent matter more. In other words, hey, if, if I'm a kid and I tune in and I find out who's worth seeing, right, I'm more likely to tell my buddies to tune in. We go to uh, King Kong Bundy and Wild Bill Irwin, still the Texas champion at this point, not for too much longer, but he still is here and has held it for a good majority of 1982 at this point against uh, Mr. Alvarez and Brian Adias. Um, obviously, easy to see that the tandem of Bundy and uh, Irwin are going to be your victors. Uh, they are given about 10 minutes or so here. Um, they don't really need that much, but Irwin uh, can go with anybody. I actually would have liked to have seen at some point, and maybe it does happen in 1983. Who knows? We're not there yet. I know it hasn't happened in 82, but the idea of a Ric Flair-Bill Irwin match uh, on the basis of Irwin here has me intrigued. Um, they're still protecting to a degree 
uh, Brian Diaz. The Diaz, of course, has what they say is about a year's experience uh, and is um, a friend of the Von Erichs, so maybe protecting him for that reason. Good baby face. It's odd because you see something that I don't, I still don't understand, and that is they will have King Kong Bundy do wrestling maneuvers. I guess I'm so used to Bundy from the Mid-South where he's protected and the, um, the area of, you know, the WWF where he just does really basic body slams and power moves that seeing him do a hammer lock or uh, an arm bar wrist lock or something like that or take a bump off a drop kick like he does in this match. Single drop kick, by the way, taking him down um, from a Diaz. And it just, it, it doesn't make sense to me that, that the idea to protect Andre the Giant is there, but the idea to protect a guy like a, not that Kamala's been here yet, but a Kamala or a, 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 a King Kong Bundy doesn't happen. Um, but we do see the tandem of Bundy and... Uh, Irwin do get a double team victory. Uh, Bundy, you know, bragging on his partner as we close the program and we end uh, the September 4th edition of this program. We'll be back with more right after this. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. <laughs>